In the early 1700s, during the colonization of Canada, many French people moved to Rupert's Land, specifically in South Manitoba, the more uninhabited lands of Canada, and settled with First Nations tribes. The descendants of these French and native peoples were called the Métis, half French and half Aboriginal. In 1714, the Treaty of Utrecht was signed, though, and made the French territory in Rupert's Land belong to the British. For a century and a half, the land was owned by the Hudson's Bay Company, a British company that hunted animals and collected and traded furs with the locals. This did not affect the Métis much, as the British mostly stayed away from the Métis, and a few times they met, they traded. But in 1867, the Confederation and creation of the state of Canada happened, and two years later, in 1869, the British arranged for Canada to buy Rupert's land from the Hudson's Bay Company. William McDougall was to be made governor of the Rupert's Land Territory, though he was despised by the Métis. The Canadian government then sent out surveyors to Manitoba to map it out for inhabitation by Canadians. But the Métis, led by Louis Riel, blocked them from entering Manitoba. Upon hearing of the Confederation of Canada's creation, Louis Riel created a provisional government in Manitoba and pled directly to the Canadian government to make Manitoba its own province of Canada, which they did, reluctantly. In Manitoba, meanwhile, Louis Riel's men in the provisional government peacefully took Fort Derry and secured small towns and imprisoned some pro-Canadian men who tried to resist the provisional government. The men were imprisoned in Fort Garry, the main Métis base, and in January of 1870, some men escaped the fort, including several resistance leaders, such as Thomas Scott, Charles Mayer, and Dr. John Schultz. They met up with Lieutenant Charles Bouton and organized a plan to overthrow the Métis. Thomas Scott and Charles Bouton led parties to take Fort Garry, while Charles Mayer and Dr. Schultz stayed back. Bouton and the zealous Thomas Scott, as well as about 50 pro-Canadians, marched on Fort Garry, but Bouton then had the urge to turn back, and while he and Thomas Scott were speaking to each other, Métis descended on the pro-Canadians and arrested them, with no casualties to either side. Riel returned and sentenced Bouton to death for his anti-Métis actions, but he was pardoned and instead Thomas Scott was sentenced to death for his actions as well as that he kept yelling obscenities and death threats in the prison. Thomas Scott was executed by firing squad on March 4, 1870. Upon hearing of this, Dr. Schultz and Charles Mayer fled to Toronto where they told the government of Scott's death, and the Métis and how they're terrible, and started raising militias. Many Canadians were furious with the Métis, and lots of Toronto men volunteered for the militias. Though, on May the 12th, the Manitoba Act was passed from the Canadian government, stating that Manitoba would become a province on July 15th. Everyone was happy here, as the Canadian government got to keep Manitoba in Canada, and the Métis could provincially control their own land. But the idea of giving the Métis any land pissed off the people of Toronto, who demanded a military expedition sent to Manitoba. The Canadian government sent a military expedition, though, of some Canadian soldiers, headed by the famous Colonel Garnet Wolseley, to Manitoba. The force was supposed to just be sent on peace terms and to arrest Louis Riel and act as a police force until the Canadian government could properly set up in the area. But as they were leaving Toronto, hundreds of Canadian militiamen joined them, intent on killing Métis and lynching Riel. Wolseley let them stay in the column, but said any man killing a Métis unlawfully would be tried. The men still had the intent on killing Riel, though. The military expedition arrived at Fort Garry on August 24th. Just as they arrived, though, Riel and some of his main men fled to the United States, where they would stay for a few years before returning to fight the Northwest Rebellion.